Productivity has always been the name of the game for the Galaxy Note series. From the beefy internals to the great cameras, to the large screen and equally large battery, and of course, the S Pen. The Galaxy S series is meant to be what defines the Samsung Galaxy flagship experience and it's usually exactly what most users are looking for. But for those who want that much more, the Note series has historically been the answer. And that hasn't changed at all for this year's release at least for the Note 10 Plus. To me, the standard Note 10, while it will be good for bringing in new users, it just feels like an S10 with an S Pen. The Note 10 Plus, however, is what longtime Note fans have been waiting for since the last iteration. And after spending almost a month with this hunk of a smartphone, boy, do I have a lot to say. At 6.8 inches, it's Samsung's biggest phone to date. You can absolutely call it a phablet in the truest sense of the word. Though slightly more subtle than in previous years, the screen still curves towards the edges, resulting in slim bezels on the sides. But even the top and bottom bezels remain very thin, with the top one in particular being able to achieve this thanks to the updated Infinity O design, more commonly known as the punch hole. On the subject of the punch hole, two things stand out as strange to me. One of them being obviously the center placement, and the second, for the Note 10 Plus specifically, why isn't it a dual lens setup like with the S10 Plus? For the first point, I actually like the S10 series corner placement of the punch hole because you can ignore it more easily. However, for this center positioned one, you can easily still remedy this by using a clever wallpaper and over time you just get used to it anyway. Moving things over to the back, the tough Corning Gorilla Glass 6 panel curves towards the edges making it look and feel very fluid. I'm not a big fan of the Aura Glow colorway though like the one we have here as the literal mirror finish lends itself to even the smallest form of dirt, smudge, or fingerprint. But you you can easily remedy that by putting on a nice protective case like one of these ones from Rinky. The quad rear camera setup on the top left corner of the back is a departure from Samsung's typical design language of putting the rear cameras in the upper center. This makes the Note 10 series look similar to almost all other phones on the market, so that's one signature design point that Samsung has decided to give up on. But the one that's been bugging everybody since launch is of course the absence of the beloved headphone jack. While the Note 10 Plus does come with some pretty good AKG USB-C earphones included in the box, we believe this is the industry signal wired audio lovers have been dreading. If Samsung says the headphone jack is cancelled, then it very well may be. At the bottom though, instead of a headphone jack, we get the Type-C port, downward firing speaker, noise cancelling microphone for regular calls, and the slot for the S Pen. Physically, this year's stylus remains the same as last year's, though internally it now has motion sensors that enable a lot of things software-wise. Heading to the opposite side, the top, we have the hybrid card tray that can accommodate either two nano-sized SIM cards or one of those plus a micro SD card up to one terabyte. This small feature is another reason the Note 10 Plus makes a stronger case for Note Dumb compared to the standard Note 10. Beside the card tray, we have another noise-canceling microphone as well as what many assumed was an IR blaster initially, but it's actually a small cavity that leads to the area where the speakerphone is. I really appreciate this subtle design choice because it makes all the difference for audio. To make the top bezel as thin as it is, the speakerphone or earpiece has to be just as slim. This is fine for regular calls, but remember, Samsung flagships have stereo audio. The hole on top allows for another pathway for the sound to escape from, making the audio sound clearer and louder. Because of the flatness of the top and bottom sides, the device takes on a boxy look reminiscent of older Sony Xperia smartphones. Though the corners are rounded out just enough, such that the phone feels great in the hand or in your pocket, that is if you have a big enough pocket for this guy. Rounding off the design, on the left side are the volume and power buttons. Left-handed users will enjoy this placement the most, but I think most of us can agree that the removal of the Bixby button is very much welcome. The Note 10 Plus, aside from being the biggest, is also one of Samsung's prettiest looking phones to date. The industrial design lends itself a lot to the productivity-focused nature of the lineup, and it has some clever functionality tucked away. I'm also quite impressed that it's just as thin as the S10 Plus at just 7.9mm. However, this design probably won't get a perfect score from consumers due to the placement of the punch hole camera, the lack of a headphone jack, and in some cases, the placement of the buttons. 
The Note 10 Plus sports a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED Infinity O display with a maximum resolution of 3040 by 1440, which equates to 498 pixels per inch. Out of the box, resolution is set to 2280 by 1080, but you also have the option of going down to 1520 by 720 if you want to maximize your battery life. Even at Full HD+, the screen looks amazing thanks to the deep blacks, vibrant colors, and wide range of brightness. With all these factors at play, you don't even notice the image isn't as sharp as QHD, but bumping up the resolution just makes it all the more pleasant to the eyes. On its own, the display is great, but just like the S10 series, there are a few features that bump up the experience even more. HDR10 Plus support, advanced blue light filtering, highly customizable color temperature, touch sensitivity control, and more. And you don't need to worry that much about the punch hole when viewing wide content either. The 19 by 9 aspect ratio is usually more than enough to accommodate anamorphic format titles you can find on Netflix and other platforms while still hiding the punch hole in the little black bar. As for the audio experience, it doesn't disappoint. I still personally prefer front-facing speakers like on the Google Pixel 3 or the Razer Phone 2, but this year's Samsung flagships have convinced me that downward firing plus earpiece stereo setups can be just as good. The Note 10 Plus's pair make for an excellent listening duo to provide an immersive experience. They get really loud such that when you're in a quiet room, maximum volume is almost unnecessary, highs and mids are crystal clear with a hint of bass from the bottom speaker, and there's decent separation. And turning on the Dolby Atmos mode puts all of these aspects into overdrive. The Note 10 Plus is the ultimate multimedia device, the best one there is right now, and I don't expect that to change until next year. Moving on to the cameras, the Note 10 Plus provides a wide array of photography options. The rear module consists of a 12MP main wide-angle shooter, a 12MP telephoto shooter, a 16MP ultrawide shooter, and a time-of-flight 3D camera. The main rear camera still has the variable aperture that's been around since the Galaxy S9. All of them except the time-of-flight camera are equipped with image stabilization, although only the main and telephoto have dual-pixel PDAF. For selfies, it has a single 10 megapixel shooter with dual pixel PDAF. As with the S10 Plus, I do think it would have been perfectly appropriate if the Note 10 Plus had a secondary front camera. It would have been perfect if it had a wide angle lens for easier group selfies, but a depth sensing camera like the one on the S10 Plus and would have also made for a more feature packed phone. Shots from both the front and rear cameras come out great, especially in bright outdoor settings. It's a joy to shoot with a wide selection of focal lengths. Shots from all the lenses come out looking sharp with really wide dynamic range, and colors really pop. It seems to me that over the years, Samsung's post-processing has gotten more aggressive in how it boosts colors, though it does this effectively, especially for skin tones. Live focus or portrait mode still works as good as ever, providing good subject background separation, and I still enjoy being able to adjust the blur after the fact. In suboptimal lighting conditions though, the Note 10 Plus, or any Samsung flagship for that matter, would not be my weapon of choice. The details end up appearing muddy, previously vibrant colors get washed out, and shadows are peppered with noise. The dedicated night mode, however, works great for shots around the city and such, with a good balance of bright and dark spots. Noise gets cleaned up a little bit, highlights don't get blown out as much, and the shot just looks more dynamic. For video, the Note 10 Plus can shoot up to UHD 4K for both the front and rear cameras. Since the display has HDR10 support and there isn't a lot of content available yet, it's good that you can at least shoot video in HDR10+. Just like with the photos, video is great as long as you're shooting in well-lit conditions. Especially at 4K, shots come out looking very sharp with nice colors and the stabilization is on point. The camera app now also has a built-in video editor where you can do basic things like splice together clips, add text, and add music. And for selfies, the S Pen receives new functionality like I mentioned earlier. Last year with the Note 9, Samsung increased the Pen's functionality by having it double as a remote trigger for the camera. Now that concept has been expanded upon with air actions. Using the S Pen like a magic wand, different gestures now allow you to control the camera app even more, such as flicking up and down to switch between the front and rear cameras, or doing a circular motion to zoom in and out. Which is why when it comes to the Note 10 Plus's camera, the hardware is actually the boring part of the story. Aside from the usual set of features like Pro Mode, Panorama, Portrait, etc., there are a slew of brand new software features. In fact, most of the new things we get in terms of the camera are found in the software. There's AR Doodle which allows you to draw on top of videos which will then track the motion and match the position in 3D space. 
This works best on faces, but I think the everywhere feature is even cooler because with the right conditions, the motion tracking is superb. For the time of flight camera, there's the 3D scanner that gives you a full 360 degree 3D model of the object of your choice. The software isn't perfect just yet and takes a combination of practice, the right subject, and good lighting conditions, but it does work. And if your 3D model is anthropomorphic enough, like a stuffed animal for example, the phone can even rig the joints and match the movement to that of a real person. For videos, there are two new major features. The first being Super Steady Mode, which utilizes the ultra-wide camera to be able to crop and artificially make the optically stabilized image even more steady. The experience is actually comparable to using a motorized gimbal, but I recommend only using it with good shooting conditions. The second new video feature is Live Focus Video, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically portrait mode for video with different modes, which granted has been done before by Huawei, but it's still a great feature for creative expression. Great camera hardware and software make for an excellent combination in any phone, and the Note 10 Plus definitely has that. Aside from being the ultimate media consumption device, it also makes a strong case for the ultimate media creation device. Running the software show is One UI 1.5 on top of Android, 9 Pi. It's Samsung's best interface to date, featuring a clean and user-friendly experience with features such as focus blocks that present information in a more clear way, segregated viewing and interaction areas, and our favorite native dark or night mode. The physical Bixby button may be dead, but software Bixby is alive and well as the default virtual assistant of choice. DeX is also back stronger than ever. Previously, you had to connect your phone to a display and pair a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. But the new DeX allows you to simply plug in your Note 10 or Note 10 Plus into a Windows or Mac computer, which then brings up a window with the DeX virtual desktop complete with all your apps. This allows you to essentially control your phone with your computer, but also seamlessly drag and drop files between the two. Samsung's new partnership with Microsoft also brings the Your Phone app, which allows you to view and send text messages from your PC and wirelessly transfer images between the two. And I don't think it's a coincidence that those two things sound almost exactly like iMessage and AirDrop. Almost all of the S Pen's new features have to do with the camera, though the SDK is available to developers. So the motion sensors can be expected to gain even more functionality as time goes on. However, on the side of actually taking notes, converting handwriting to text is hardly a new thing, but exporting directly to Word is a feature that honestly should have been there since the beginning and it's my favorite new S Pen feature. But before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to highlight one thing, the Samsung Global Goals app. It's an app that allows you to help 17 different goals or initiatives set by world leaders for a better world by 2030. You can either donate directly to the goal of your choice or simply allow the app to show you ads. The ad revenue can then be donated directly to a particular goal. So if you do end up buying a Note 10 or Note 10 Plus after watching this review, we highly encourage you to check out this app. And even if you don't buy one, the app is also available for download as well on other Android devices or iOS. Moving on to performance. Since we get the EMEA variant, the Note 10 Plus is powered by the new Samsung Exynos 9825, which is a refresh of the Exynos 9820 present in the S10 series. It was designed to address a few problems found in the Exynos 9820, namely power efficiency and thermals. The SoC is now manufactured using the 7 nanometer EUV process, moving on from the 8 nanometer FinFET process. However, it uses the same general core configuration. Two fourth gen custom cores, two Cortex A75 cores, four Cortex A55 cores, plus a Mali G76 MP12 GPU, and a dedicated NPU. The Note 10 Plus is truly a workhorse of a device, breezing through any task you throw at it, no matter how many tasks. It's smooth, it's fast, it's highly responsive, and with the hefty 12 gigabytes of RAM, multitasking is done with ease. And at the highest settings, any game is buttery smooth. Check out these benchmark scores now. Even the internal storage is faster now, looking at the read and write speeds of the Note 10 Plus compared to the S10 Plus. The improved chipset, large RAM capacity, and fast storage truly make it the fastest Samsung flagship today. For biometric security, the ultrasonic under-display fingerprint scanner and facial recognition make a comeback. And both options are just as fast, accurate, and secure as they were on the S10 series. Now taking a look at battery life, the Note 10 Plus is packed with a capacity of 4,300 mAh, which is appropriately huge for a phone of this size and capability. I've mostly been using the phone with the Full HD Plus resolution option, bumping up only to Quad HD when using Netflix. 
even then, I can usually get a good day and a half without having to look for a charge. But then again, this depends on your usage. In our standard video loop test, we got 19 hours and 53 minutes of playback, which is a great result. For charging, the Note 10 Plus supports fast charging up to 45 watts, Qi wireless fast charging, and reverse wireless charging from the S10 family makes a comeback. In the box, only a 25 watt charger is included, but even with that, Getting to a full 100% from a dead battery only takes about an hour. That's very fast considering the huge 4,300mAh capacity. Now let's wrap this up. With its starting price tag of 60,990 pesos, it can definitely get easy to dismiss this phone as way too overpriced. But think about it this way. The S10 Plus starts at 55,990 pesos. For just 5,000 pesos more, you might be losing an additional front camera and a headphone jack, but everything else gets a significant boost. You get a bigger screen, better chipset, more RAM, more storage and faster storage, better cameras, a bigger battery, and an S Pen that's always there in case you need it. It would be unfair to the Note 10 Plus though if our evaluation was just based on how it does compared to the S10 Plus. As its own device, it does a better job of carrying the Galaxy Note name and lineage compared to its little brother. For all intents and purposes, the Note 10 Plus is the real Note 10, and the Note 10 is more like the Note 10 Lite. Until further notice, this is the ultimate device for productivity, multimedia consumption, content creation, and raw performance. And mind you, all of that is in a very sleek, very sexy package. So what do you guys think about the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content, hit the bell icon to see future uploads, and be sure to visit yougatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Joey. This has been our long, full review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And I'll see you guys in the next one.